Hey guys, Grand Clock here from Critical Effect. Uh, this video is probably going to be more, longer than I want. And I've accepted that. But I want to start off by saying what this video is and what this video is not. This video is not how to rat C2 sites the fastest, the best, the most isk per hour. That's not what this is. Because I was thinking about it and I'm like, alright, what is C2 site ratting? And at the end of the day, it's intro level ratting to wormhole space so I wanted to take things back a step and really focus on everything that makes someone a good PVEer, a good ratter and focus on developing those skills and that knowledge set so that you can then apply that to other things like C3 ratting, C4 ratting and hopefully one day for you C5 ratting. So first let's start off with the basics. What is ratting in wormhole space? Uh, it's a little different from case space. In case space, you go, you kill something, you get a bounty payout. You can then loot the wreck sometimes, get some modules, get some stuff you can turn in for money. You can then salvage the wrecks, and then you finish, if it's a mission, you finish the mission and you get a payout. Normal space is not really like that. In normal space, we have things called sleepers. There are omni-tanked and omni-damage NPCs that will defend these combat sites or relic sites. Now, these NPCs are going to give us something very special once we kill them, called blue loot. There's four types of blue loot, they just range in value. Uh, nonetheless, you collect it all, you take it to case space, and you turn it into NPC buy orders on the market. Do not sell to other player buy orders, they will shortcut you, and they will, yeah, it's not good. So these NPC buy orders are what you need to sell to. That's how we make our money. We can also salvage these wrecks. Um, C2 salvage, not really worth it. C3 salvage, not really worth it. That being said, C5 sites, the salvage per site is about 50 million isk. So yeah, definitely worth it. One of the coolest and greatest things about wormhole space ratting is that it is static. It never changes. Wave 1 will always have the same wave, you know, three cruisers, X and Y, Z, amount of frigates, and this trigger will always be the same. That way you know every single time what you're going to shoot, how much DPS it's going to bring, and what you need to really worry about, like scrams, newts, and other things. So with that said, let's introduce the first tool that's our best friend here as uh, any wormholer for any site ever, and that is Ricky's Guide. Now, Ricky's Guide is kind of old now. Um, it's The one I'm using isn't quite maintained as much. There are other versions, other uh, spin-offs of Ricky's Guide. I know of Car's Guide. Uh, but what this guide is, is a spreadsheet that has every single site on it, every single ship that newts, all the DPS of every wave, every single ship that scrams, all the triggers marked, the amount of money you'll make on every single site, has all the information you will ever need. And the way we read this is simple. Red means trigger. If we go ahead and look at wave one, the Awaken Watchman, marked as a cruiser, is indeed red and therefore is the, uh, the trigger. There's only one of these guys, so if you kill him, the next wave will spawn. Wave two, the Sleepest Patroller, marked Battleship, is the trigger. There is only one, therefore once you kill him, wave three will spawn. Wave three is it for that site. There will be no wave four. I swear when I say all the information you could ever want about a site is here. You got scrams, webs, newts, remote reps. You got the DPS of each wave, the alpha of each rate wave. But not really importantly, but out of curiosity, you can also see the blue loot you'll make on that site. If you notice, that's an exact number. That's because every single time you run a wormhole site, it's the same exact amount of blue loot. Never changes. I think it's worth mentioning too that Every single wave spawns in the same location for every single site. There's, there's no change in spawn location. So if your fit is designed to sig tank and you want to sig tank a battleship, all you have to do is know where the battleship spawns for the next wave before you trigger the next wave. And therefore, when the battleship does spawn, you'll already be in position ready to sig tank. So knowing your site sometimes is important. I myself have made this... Uh, spawn card for the solar cells back in the day because I would use it in order to get in position for my Drekovac for the final wave when there's two battleships. But for all intents and purposes, that was for min-maxing and we're not going to really focus on that. We're going to make fits that don't really depend on that or at least 
won't wholeheartedly depend on that. You'll see in a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to get that SIG tank going, but you don't need it the entire time. Now, in EVE Online, I hope you're in a corp, and I hope your corp is well settled enough to the point where you say, hey guys, I want to get into ratting. Do you have a ratting fit? That someone will just link you a ratting fit, and you'll go, thank you. Uh, in the wormhole groups, you, you ask for a C3 router, and they go, here, C3 router. Oh, you need a C2 router? Here, C2 router. Really easy. How do you know that that fit's going to work for you? How do you know that that fit's going to work at all? Let's apply our first tool, Ricky's Guide and take those numbers, specifically speaking, the DPS numbers, and now put it into PIFA, so we can PIFA our fits. Now, PIFA is gonna be the second tool we're gonna to be utilizing here. You can download it online. PIFA is regularly updated. It might not have the best UI in the world. I know it's gross, but you can import your character skills and see exactly your capability in everything. What we care about is our effective hit points per second, AKA how much damage we can tank or a DPS tank we have. The fit we see now inside my PIFA is indeed the Gnosis I'm gonna take and run later, and it does work. So how does a Gnosis, who only tanks 350-ish EHP a second, somehow survive a site that does 590 DPS at its peak? And the answer is SIG tanking. And while it does do 590 DPS, it's not that much, and there is a small buffer on this ship, which means we have time to approach get into position to SIG tank, and then SIG tank the rest of the site. So far we've introduced PIFA, a simulation software that allows you to check your skills with the fit you're trying to fly. We've checked Ricky's Guide, which tells us everything we could ever want to know about the sites we're about to run. The last resource I'm going to leave you guys off on is called EVE Workbench. It's a repository where people post their fits, with meaningful, normally shitty descriptions or titles, and you can find fits. Search in C2, guess what comes up? C2 fits. And as we can see, a lot of them are affordable. Matter of fact, in part two of this video, or of the, the single video, part two later on when we fly the Harbinger, I find a fit on Eve Workbench from two years ago that a court mate of a, a critical effect posted. And I think it's hilarious that he posted it two years ago as a C2 site runner, and I uh, ended up using it, and it works great, perfectly fine. Up on the screen is a random Drake that I selected, uh, marked as a simple C2 runner. Do note, he's using heavy missiles, and the heavy missiles have great range. I did run into application issues with the C2 sites. I've never run them before I made this little video for people. C2 sites, the waves spawn far from one another, one another. So you spend a lot of time approaching, not shooting, if you don't have good range. So I'd actually would recommend flying this Drake, even though it has less DPS than the Harbinger, less DPS than the Gnosis that I fly during this video. It has the ability to shoot the entire time, which is super important. Uh, because you don't want to be there not shooting. Not shooting is not making money. And with that all addressed, I think it's finally time to do a little security briefing and then get into it. This is wormhole space. There is no local. You cannot tell if it's safe or if it ever is safe, and you should assume it is never safe. There are three things that make you safe. That's gonna be having hole control, which you probably won't do as a day tripper. Having SIG watch, which only is valid if you have hole control, but also I guess it is valid just to see if you get K162'd, and actively watching your D scan. Those three things will keep you alive from ganks and getting rolled into and so on sending a saber over. Overall, if a covert op ship decloaks on you and gets a bump on you, you're probably dead. So don't fly what you can't afford to lose. Uh, that being said, you will probably make your money back off a CT router within three hours. So get your money back and then fly dangerous. And yeah, post-production me doesn't really have much more else to say. Uh, Pre-production, when I recorded all this stuff, is going to go ahead and narrate everything that I did, uh, anything that really came to my head when it was in the moment. So sit back, relax, and uh, hope you learn something new. All right, guys, I'm here inside a C2 Wormel. If we check the probe scanner, we can see we have a bunch of sites, perimeter hangars, ruined enclaves. If we check here too, my friends have scanned ahead and have found an unsecured perimeter, or whatever, forgotten perimeter habitat. If we re reference 
our side sheet. Here we are running at 345 EHP a second. We're doing about 492 DPS. Uh, we are cap stable and we are running a little different than the other Gnosis fits I was able to find. That's just because uh, I, I like to over tank things and then we'll see how this fit handles shit. But nonetheless, that's not the point of this video. Any ship you find, is it's just arbitrary, you know? You're going to find ships that you fly, you're going to learn to like them, there's going to be a bunch out there. Just looking at bloody uh, EVE workbench here, we can see, you know, there's a bunch of ships. A lot of them are battle cruisers. we got some Caldare, Galente, got a couple cruisers, there's a Harbinger, so a lot of battle cruisers, uh, one other Gnosis. But my point is, you'll find your ship you'll find the tree that you've gone down and there will be a fit out there for that. But that's not how you run these sites. How you run these sites is a matter of reading Ricky's Guide. You Being able to understand Ricky's Guide, develop a fit based off that, and then going out on the site and actually running it is what we're focusing on here. So let's start with one of the easier sites, the perimeter hangers. We scroll down, we have the perimeter hanger here. We'll see there's going to be three waves, and two of these waves will spawn the next. So in red, last one shot will spawn the next wave. So if I just shoot all the red ones first, and I leave the frigates on field, the next wave will show up with the frigates still on field. So it's very important that you don't do that. If I want to reduce the DPS on a wave before spawning the next wave, I can kill these two cruisers, then kill the frigates, and then go back to that cruiser. But for us, I don't, I don't think we're going to have to need to do that. Now let's go ahead and set on out over to a perimeter hangar. On our way over, we're going to make a safe. Now, the reason we're going to make a safe is that if we see something on D-Scan, which we're going to be actively checking, uh, we want to go to our safe. We don't want to go to a hole because maybe they're thinking ahead and they're trying to catch us there, but we do not want to be a victim in this situation. We're going to go ahead, drop our MTU, turn on our spinny bits, I'm going to bookmark our MTU. I always name it my initials, Gren, and then put the first one, one. And let's start killing stuff. Now, if we re-reference Ricky's guide, we can see the cruisers are the trigger. So we want to go ahead and shoot the frigates first. Now, frigates will engage drones, so just be mindful on that. When I go ahead and move these into their respective folders, launch, and let's start shooting. Put that there. Let's forget our popping real quick. That's great. Now our range on our missiles is pretty short, 20 kilometers. So we're going to need to approach one of these guys. Put on our afterburner. And we'll get in range there. Now we're in range, that's great. So the site's starting off well. Of course, this is the weaker of the waves. Uh, this wave is only 145 DPS. The next wave is going to be the hardest one of this site, 417 DPS. If things get tricky, I brought a active shield charge. Therefore, it'll help our tanking just a little bit more. And because we're cap stable, we can just run nonstop. Now, in the beginning, I uh, was in Jita and I was just throwing together a fit. And I really want to reiterate there's fits out there, there's ships out there. You're going to have groups out there that have fitting gurus. Getting a fit is not an issue. Knowing how to actually run the site, what to hit and just being familiar with how the wormhole site mechanics are is what I want to focus on here. And it's really repetitive because it's set in stone. There's no nothing different between any of the sites when it comes to mechanics. They're all documented. The second you shoot this last cruiser, the next wave's going to spawn. That's guaranteed. Each cruiser is going to drop a guaranteed amount of blue loot. That way we, we know for a fact how much money we're going to get off this site. If we read right here, we're going to get 15,600,000 ISK every single time. There's no variations. Let's go ahead and approach this last guy. No, 
Now for this next wave, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... I want to get a little DPS off the field, so I think I'm going to go for a cruiser first and then go for the battleship. Because I think the battleship will take just a little too long for me to want to uh, focus on him. If I get the cruiser off the field, that might help with us on DPS. Grendel and Post here. Uh, the reason why I'm choosing to get some DPS on the field is because the SIG tank of this Gnosis fit is not yet tested. I do not know if this Gnosis will actually SIG tank the site. And mathematically speaking, it will die on the site if I just sit there at zero because the application will be at its maximum and this, that, that wave does more damage than I can actually tank. So I'm playing a very cautious route here. Now, if we look here, they spawned far away. That is fine. We're just going to approach on over. We're going to reload in the meantime. Now, I am right there. I'm fluttering my recharger just because I don't know how well my cap's going to do against these guys. That being said, they don't actually new, so I'm fine. Never mind, I'm still cap stable. Now I'm tanking. Little. I don't quite like it. Let's go ahead and pop off my shield thing. Let's try to get some transversal up and send our drones out on one of these cruisers. Now, transversal is your angular momentum against something, so it's harder to be hit. When I'm approaching them like that, I have zero transversal, and I'm very easy to hit. Now, they switched to a drone, so I'm going to return to drone bay. Hopefully, he makes it back, and I'm going to keep approaching while they're focused on him. And he made it, just barely made it. Still a yellow box, which means they're still probably going to hit. Nope, back to red box. Red box means they're hitting me, yellow box means I'm just targeted. I don't feel like launching that hammerhead again because he's almost dead, so I will replace him with a hobgoblin. looks to me like my drones here are going to kill this cruiser all on their own before I even get over there. Now that being said, if I would have known the spawn locations for this site, I would have positioned myself better, but that being said, this is actually the first C2 site I've ever run. I actually run C3s and C5s, so I do not know the spawn locations. I'm happy admitting that. Go ahead and keep approaching here. Now, we do not want to kill this guy. He's the trigger. He's our X trigger. Do not want to kill him. If we would have spawned in the next wave accidentally, that would have been 323 DPS plus 300 DPS, so 600 DPS, and we cannot tank that, so being careful on when you spawn waves is very important. Now we're in range to shoot this battleship. Sweet. He's not even applying to me anymore. If we look here at my notifications, I saw a miss a second ago. We'll see if we see another one. I just lost my angular, the orbit current. There, he missed again. So that's why you can have an effective hit point per second less than the DPS the site actually does, is because if you know the spawn locations and you position yourself correctly, you can then orbit and therefore not get hit, and therefore you're not taking damage. 
So for this wave, it was 417 DPS. I have 345 EHP a second. So there's a very small discrepancy there, but as we can see, he's not hitting me at all. So knowing the spawn locations definitely helps, especially if you want to be able to go up, you know, tank more than you can actually tank. So let's go ahead and start this next wave. Not too far away. Got two cruisers and a battleship. Let's go ahead and send my drones on these guys. Now, as I said, I'm not focused on the fit here. I'm focused on how to run this site, but I would learn from this site and I would adjust. I probably don't want to be running hams. They do not have the range. This entire time, I could be applying with just regular heavies. Even though they didn't do as much damage, I'd actually be doing damage. Therefore, you know, way better. So, Mark II of this ship is probably going to have just normal heavies. But this version is going to be running hams because that's what I tossed on it. That being said, the Gnosis is happily doing its drone boat duties and killing things. And if we re-reference Ricky's guide, we can see there's only three waves here, so this is the final wave. I did bring two MTUs, which means I can just head to my next site after and come back later. I don't have to wait for my MTU to pick everything up. go ahead and not forget our drones here we're going to recall them and in case uh, you're wondering how do i already have this i think i mentioned earlier i'm inside a corporation and when a scanner goes out and scans out a wormhole and scans out our chain he scans it for everyone so he saves things for other people so i'm going to go ahead warp over to this relic site my mtu okay. is safe right there okay. and bookmarked so i'll come back for that i'm going to reload in the meantime so let's see what do we need to prepare ourselves against for this next one if we look at this we have webs they're going to slow us down, which means we won't be able to sig tank on those waves. So if we want sig tank ability, which we kind of do on this one against that patroller, we need to focus fire the escort. So that's choosing priority targets right there. I want a sig tank, so I need to kill the webs. Same thing for this one. Thankfully for this one, it's only 250 DPS. So that means we are fine. We can sit there still like a brick and we can tank the site. No issues at all. For this final wave, we're a little worried about it, so we're going to definitely try going for these escorts first. Just like last time, we're going to go ahead, start approaching, we're going to drop our MTU, turn on everything, and we're going to save our MTU's location. It's going to be Gren 2. Now, for this wave, the Emergent Escort Frigate is marked as the trigger, therefore I'm going to go for the Patroller then the cruisers, then those ones. So let's look back on over here. Patroller, cruisers, and then these ones. Let's go ahead and launch our drones. Engage, shoot. I don't think our missiles are gonna do much application to these guys, but the drones should do just fine. If anything, I'm actually going to switch my missiles to a target such as this cruiser. Let's go ahead and approach him. I can see one of my drones is getting hit. Let's recall him. They're going to red box me again and I can send them back out. Not great application. As you can see, my hammerheads are actually missing the frigate. If I had a target painter, that would be a different story. So, 
application issues is definitely something this fit is having. Um, it can be addressed inside a remake, but overall I think switching to uh, a better ship that's not a Gnosis would be advisable. But we're running the Gnosis because the fits don't matter when it comes to learning how to do things. I'm going to go ahead and start pulsing my uh, shield booster. While I am cap stable, I like to have a little more cap than what it's showing. Let's kill one of these frigates because I'm tired of them webbing my drones. And it won't spawn the next wave. Can mark this guy our attack X. Cruisers, oh, they are far away. C2s are pretty wacky on spawn distances. Now I'm going to recall instantly because I got a couple of yellows, but I'm just going to wait till they're inside my drone engagement range before I uh, let them even try to target my drones. Lock up some of these frigates. Launch my drones. And engage. Let's see, who's going to kill it first, my drones or my missiles? I personally find that cruisers engage your drones a whole lot less, but that being said, the first sight we did, the cruisers were shooting at our drones. So, I'm a little up in the air on that, but I do notice that I can leave my drones out more often than not when cruisers are on grid and not have to worry about them. But uh, that last sight kind of made me question it. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'll keep an eye for a yellow box. If a yellow box happens, I call them back. Alright, I just had a phone call and got distracted. I am back. Hobgoblins are out. Hobgoblins are engaging. Put the wrong drones out earlier, but that's fine. I got all the webs off the field. So now I'm going to put my damage on the battleship and let my drones kill everything else. If you re-referenced our rookie's guide, as always, we can see the battleship is the trigger. And he's doing the most DPS, but we've killed most of the DPS from the frigates. So we're very much in a good position on this site now.
get these escorts off the field. I do not want to be webbed on this wave. Increase my transversal on that battleship, so I'm just going to orbit him. And nothing else webs. Should be going back up here. Might need a heat. Let's see if I need a heat. I think I'm okay. Let's try to get just a little more DPS off us. Approach him. Still dodging just a couple hits, but not all the hits we want to dodge. Now that watchman's doing. 253 DPS so if we cut everything else off here we will be fine to just straight approach him head on and even after we kill this one cruiser I think we will be in a good situation so we're going to have to approach them no matter what in order to get in range of these cruisers but in the meantime let me switch to a heavier drone might as well reload Let's launch our hammerheads and engage. I have not been checking D-Scan at all. <laughs> it's not good. Should be checking D-Scan a whole lot more than that. T3Cs are going to be your number one threat inside these situations or are, while you're running these sites. Just kind of cloak up, they look at you, they see you doing it, and then they uncloak on you at two kilometers and just murder you. I believe I fit this with an oh shit. Yep, I did. So if I go into armor, it's not the end of the world, but the goal is to not go into armor. Let's go approach you. Look at that, I think we're in the green. So this fit that I randomly fit within 20 minutes in Jita, I was able to run one of the harder C2 sites, just by the skin of its teeth. And it did that because I chose the correct targets. I realized what my weakness was, being uh, webs, being that I'm very much depending on SIG tanking. Even head on now, he is not able to break us because he does not have the DPS to beat us. Two sites, an easy one and a harder one. Our little Gnosis here is able to run them both. Highly dependent on uh, SIG tanking for this second site. Extremely dependent on SIG tanking. Well, that's fine. That's, that's a playstyle. 
Uh, some people aren't comfortable with it because they don't understand it. Other people understand SIG tanking perfectly and therefore will do it 100% of the time. Uh, if you want to increase your performance on sites, you're going to have to learn the sites, learn where the waves spawn. The waves spawn in the same location every single time, which means you can put yourself at zero where the next wave is going to spawn and already be within five kilometers of a battleship to orbit it, have it miss you, and then kill everything around it, and then kill the battleship or focus the battleship, you know, depending on what the site is. So I'll go around here and pick up my MTUs, and we will see what we made in the 40 minutes that we have run C2 sites. All right, for 120 million esque fit gnosis, we made 41 million esque at 40 minutes. Not, not the best guess at all. 40 million esque an hour is comparable to gas huffing, and this is combat sites. But that being said, this is also C2 sites. All right, I'm at the 36 minute mark here on this video edit. Uh, way longer than any of my normal videos, but uh, um, really trying to show the basics, you know. We're about to take out the Harbinger here in a second, and the Harbinger is different in so many ways. It's lasers, so it uses capacitor to shoot. It's um, armor tanked, so we're going to see that when we have two armor reppers that we offset them to help our capacitor just a little bit. That's a freebie right there. Um, and it doesn't sig tank as well, but still was a great ship to fly, and it worked very well. And honestly, had a slightly better application because the Scorch was able to hit out to 36 kilometers, or 32 kilometers, one or the other, which is you know not that much better, but better than 20 kilometers. So we're going to take that out on another data site here. All right, guys, we are back here with the Harbinger. I just finished off a perimeter and perimeter hangar and I got some blue loot. As expected, it was really easy, so we're going to move on and actually go to this unsecured perimeter comms relay. Uh, the unsecured perimeter comms relay isn't really worth the best out of all the sites, but it is worth a decent amount, 20 million isk. Uh, first wave is 524 DPS. So this is going to push us already if we get this spawn, which we do want the spawn because that's money. It's a tanky guy, 112,000 EHP. Uh, second wave, nothing we're worried about. And then third wave, 557 DPS. So we will be worried about this wave. Just in case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a combat ping on our way in. That way we can bounce if we need to. Um, looking back at the site info we see there's no scram so all we have to do is align if shit gets frisky and let's go ahead and warp on in now this site seems to new if we look back at the little chart we can tell that the trigger the watchman will need us so we should kill one trigger uh, one one of the watchmen uh, leaving the trigger and then we'll hit another cruiser or the battleship Eight hundred and fifty-three kilometers. That is a great combat ping. Now we did not get a battleship here. Big bummer. We still have that final wave though to still prove this fit. Let's go ahead and lock everyone up. We took out one of the guys, go ahead and mark the trigger so we remember and can visually see. Let's go after this guy. Now I see we did get three patrollers. Uh, our sheet only marks it at six, so I wonder if there's been an update or a change, but the sheet states six, or not six, two, but we are seeing uh, three. Just note that discrepancy. Thank you. 
Or you can be like me and forget to change crystals. <laughs> Oops. Let's see if we can snipe any of these frigates as they come in. This site, 557 DPS. Let's see if this harbinger fit from two years ago that our court mate Mish made. <laughs> for this watchman first because he is weaker and it does more dps so just overall better target in my opinion now we're going to start sig tanking him here hopefully yep now we're in a sig tank position and we're only dealing with his dps Should recall and switch to hammers. On that first uh, perimeter hanger, I did lose a hammerhead. So that was pretty accidental, but nonetheless, making do. I think it's safe to say we are going to succeed on this site and kill the final guy without even having to use our combat there. So yeah, there it is. We have two fits, a 20 minute fit that I spent just throwing together Gnosis and a fit from two years ago that I found online on Eve Workbench. Both of them running these sites just fine. We were able to tank 557 DPS. That was this final wave right here that uh, you all saw the Harbinger. Uh, other sites in the C2, or C2 category of sites include, let's see, a 590. Now the 590 is a little higher. Maybe that would have been the breaking point, but I don't think so. It just seems like a couple more frigates. The frigates die pretty quickly, so it's, I don't think that'll be an issue at all. 19 millionists, not bad. Alright, so that site was just about exactly 14 minutes for 20 million isk worth of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to show an example of how to use your combat ping in case shit hits the fan too hard. Alright, so as I spawn the next wave here, because that wave was just not enough DPS, in a situation where you need to get off grid, is your tank has failed or someone you see on d-scan over here showing up or you see someone on cloak on you on grid whatever reason you have your combat ping as you can see we are aligned to that combat ping it's 868 kilometers off grid so that's good for us we're aligned to it by clicking approach we're going to click this so it stays in our screen stays in our face so we need to warp to it we can warp to it just going to sit here and wait for this wave to get us into structure and we'll warp off grid when we need to. Right, so as the DPS actually rolls in, if as an active armor tank, I ever hit this point, my first thought is, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm right clicking, approaching, getting ready for my warp out point. My tank has now failed. My tank is screaming at me. Oh no, what do I do? I warp off. 
and now you're gone instantly. If someone was on D scan, I would do this. If someone decloaked on me on grid, I would do this. If my tank is failing, I would do that. As I'm over here, I can, if I ran out of capacitor, if I, my armor just couldn't do it, whatever reason, I can get myself back up and get ready to go back in if I wanted to. Looking over here, let's find a warp end point to go back into the fight and finish it. Because we can always do little second chances. I think this little object seems good to me. Warp to the location at, let's do 50 so we're on top of them. My tank is now recovered. I'm ready to go back in. And because my tank failed once before, you know, hypothetically, and I know it might fail again, I'm just going to approach location again and start fighting. But that being said, I have a feeling my tank's going to do fine, so I'm going to approach them so I can kill them quicker. Alright guys, thanks for tagging along. This is the longest video I think I've ever made. Uh, if you found it helpful, please, by all means, let me know. If you think I missed something, say in the comment section, because if someone's actually watching this video because they're wanting to get into the C2, you know, ratting or ratting in general within wormhole space, they're probably going to be the types of people to check out the comment section. So please let me know in the comment section what I missed. I might just pin your message. Uh, that being said, I bought these two ships for the sole purpose of running this... Uh, c2 stuff for this video so i no longer have a need for them and with that said if you are new to the game and you would like to try and fly these ships uh, go ahead and send me a mail inside the game and first people to do that will get the ships i got them stored away inside jita for you so just let me know Eighty-six kilometers away, and this site is crazy.